So being the inline six, this doesn't have a dynamic mode like you have in the V8. <laughs> this is quick though. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here. And in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing a 2023 Land Rover Defender X Dynamic SE. First and foremost, so a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover of Lehigh, Utah for giving me some time with this Defender. I'm gonna include a link to their inventory in the description down below where you can check this Defender out. It's available for sale right now. And something that's awesome about the Land Rover of Lehigh is they do not charge any markups over MSRP for their new cars. So definitely check them out. And then on a side note, if you wanna save time, and money the next time you purchase a car. Link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into the video. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged three liter inline six that is paired to an eight speed automatic transmission and a mild hybrid system. Total power outputs are 395 horsepower and then 406 pound feet of torque with fuel economy being 18 around town and then 23 on the highway. And I love how they have, you know, six different lines because it's an inline six. Now let's go over this Defender 90. First off, I love the front end appearance of this. This one's finished in Santori Black. Hopefully I pronounced that properly, but it looks so sinister because everything's blacked out on this. So you guys can see here with the accent piece on either side, we've got our Defender logo front and center. Land Rover logo just down below. And then you guys can see here with the LED headlamps and then the daytime running lights, super distinctive. And then here at the fog lights down below, again, notice everything's all blacked out here at the bottom. X dynamic badge as well, parking sensors here. And this one has the air suspension. So we've got 11.5 inches of ground clearance at the highest ride height setting, which makes this extremely capable off-road. Now coming on the side here, we've got two 55 millimeter tires wrapped around 20 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear as well. I love how the wheels are all blacked out to just match the overall blacked out theme of this. This is the Batmobile Defender and really cool design. Again, simplistic, but it works. Now again, like I said, this one has the air suspension system. You guys can kind of see the canister and all that. Now the thing that I love about the air suspension and the new Defender is it has two different kind of like canister systems. So basically you have one that raises the suspension up and then you have the other one that you can compress down into so it makes it so that you still have a smooth ride quality even when you're at the higher ride height setting. Pretty cool technology. Now notice how you've got the blacked out emblem and then the venting here on the side and then the mirrors with the camera there. And then again, being a two door, looks really cool actually from a side view perspective. And again, with the air suspension raised, it is definitely tall. Now here's our key fob. We have our unlock function or lock function. This is to turn on the lights and then this is uh, to basically unlock the rear. It doesn't have a traditional SUV hatch. You basically have a cool old school off-roader SUV opening and it's really easy to open. This is easier than the uh, Jeep Wrangler, Ford Bronco and Mercedes G-Wagon in terms of like the opening uh, mechanism. Now we've got a bunch of goodies back here that you get with this uh, from brand new. You guys can see the whole kit that this comes with, which is pretty cool. Now being the two door, you don't have a ton of space here in the back, but since this does have air suspension, it makes loading things into the rear really easy since you can actually raise and lower the rear. If you want more storage space, you can fold down these seats and notice they already have protection on them. So if you put like boxes or, you know, something that's a little more heavy duty on it, you don't have to worry about like scratching nice materials because well, it's been uh, built to be used, which I really appreciate actually. And yeah, when you're all done, just as easy to close as it is to open. Now finishing things up with the rest of the rear, we've got the Defender's distinctive taillights, which look really cool, especially when you see them at night. And then notice the badges are all blacked out. We've got parking sensors here in the rear. We've got the recovery hook down below as well. And then you guys can see again with the rear suspension and then with the exhaust. Also, we've got independent front and rear suspension if you guys are wondering with the new Defender. And then actually the camera, funny enough, is down here. Not in the center of the tire like a lot of other vehicles in this weird off-roader segment. But anyways, sorry about the lighting, but there's the rest of the rear. Now being the two door, this has a massive door panel and it basically is like the regular Defender door panel, but then just like extended out and it looks pretty interesting. But material use is really nice with this particular package. Still have that cool utilitarian appearance with the exposed rivets. Notice with the mirror adjustments, you have memory seats as well. And then we do have blind spot monitoring for the mirrors. And the Meridian sound system, which sounds fantastic. And then here are the front seats. So you guys can see with the material use. Again, we've got several different textures happening here on the seats. They are power adjustable, which is nice. That's something you don't usually see in a um, 
two-door vehicle. Usually they'll do just like manual uh, seats for it. Now, as for the second row, it's actually very spacious, similar to like a two-door Wrangler. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult to get back there, but once you're back there, it's a very comfortable place to be. And then you guys can see here with the skylights at the top. And well, let's pop in. Now, sorry about the lighting, but really nice material use with the steering wheel. And then you can see the darker stitching there. And then I love how they're stitching around the airbag cover. Definitely just makes it feel a little bit more premium and upscale. We do have cruise control here on this side. And then you've got your regular like windshield wiper stock, turn signal light stock. And we have our controls for the center stack over here on this side. And again, it has that cool utilitarian appearance to it. Now here's the center gauge cluster. You can see analog gauges on either side with the screen here in the center, which you can scroll through a bunch of different menus here to see different bits of info on the Defender. Now there's two different gauge clusters you can get with the Defender. You can either option out this one, which is like the half screen, half analog, or you can get the full screen. And so it just depends on, you know, what you're gonna want from an appearance perspective, but there's that. Now this is the 11.4 inch infotainment system. So first off we pop it in reverse, you can see the backup camera with trajectory lines that turn the steering wheel. And then notice we have our off-road mode as well, which will let you know what's locked and what's not. Um, and then you've got the different camera viewpoints here as well with the camera system. So pretty solid uh, from that perspective. And then you can see response time with the screen is great, even though this still has like the plastic covering on it. I love how it shows us the elevation here. And then you've got the slope assist, tons of like off-road stuff happening. Let's us know if it's locked or not. You've got the wade sensing as well. And yeah, just really cool system with all the info that you can see with it. Oops, didn't mean to press that. Um, but yeah, overall great uh, technology from like letting you know the off-road information, but then also just from like a daily usability standpoint as well. So we have the shifter here for the eight speed automatic transmission. And then we have a bunch of controls here in this section. So we've got a hill descent control. We've got this for the air suspension. You got that for the low range stability control. And then we have our drive mode slash climb control section. So I push in, that'll let me change the seats. And then I can push this for fan speed. And then it's just temperature right now. And then I push this for the drive mode select. And then those actually pop on here. So notice there's comfort, eco, and then there's a bunch of different off-road modes. So there's grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, wade, and then you've got your configurable mode where you can basically customize it. Um, but they have drive modes for pretty much every single off-road obstacle. And then it just basically changes the defender settings to be perfect for that obstacle. And it's pretty cool overall. And when you're done, just press that button and then you're back to normal. Notice we got some USBs and charging ports down here. And then you can see with the storage space right there, nice sturdy grab handle. And we've got the refrigerator center console here with our wireless phone charger. And then if we move these aside, you can see you've got the cup holders right here, but this is cool that they have this so that you can just like, well, put uh, keys to a ProMaster and a uh, Porsche 911 Targa <laughs> on your center console thing. Anyways, notice it says Defender there and you've got another grab handle here, but it's got nice leather on it. Most premium grab handle on the planet. You've got the USB right there. And then here is the glove box set up and then popping here to the top. You can see you've got the panoramic center again with these skylights, controls for the center right here, traditional mirror, and darker colored headliner. So here's the window sticker for this Defender. Now you guys can see here with the standard equipment that this comes with from the factory. And then notice the warranty information. So we have a four year, 50,000 mile new vehicle warranty and roadside assistance as well. And then base MSRP before option, $69,000. Now this has quite a few options added to it, uh, including some stuff that helps it out with the off-roading, like the uh, advanced off-road capability pack. Um, but after all options on this particular one, total MSRP, $81,165. Let's see how she scoots. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors, we still have blind spot monitoring. And then throughout the rest of the rear. And let's set off. So setting off here in the Defender 90. <laughs> and well, we're at the top of the air suspension. Cause you know, we gotta, we gotta see how the ride quality is. And it's actually really solid. I know I'm just in a parking lot right now, but it's, it's quite impressive how smooth this is 
at the top of the air suspension because most vehicles it's like walking around on stilts it's so stiff and abrasive and it's just not a good time whatsoever um, but this on the other hand it's actually really smooth so we'll kind of get up and move here a little bit yeah it's super smooth this engine's so responsive i drove the v8 defender a few weeks ago definitely a big difference um, in terms of the feel and we're actually going to lower the air suspension down yeah normal height selected so we'll just do the normal driving height so i can actually see what this is like to drive in all your normal day-to-day -day use um, but the defender being unibody and having independent front and rear suspension drives exceptionally smooth now you still have like a very you know high up king of the road type feel here in the defender with how they've set up the seat and everything um, but that it, it, it doesn't ride harsh like what you're going to get in a ford bronco or jeep wrangler mercedes g-wagon they do a really good job with the new one in terms of the ride quality um, but this still feels a lot more car like it's quiet too there's actually it seems like there's less wind buffeting with this than what you'd get in the uh, g-wagon actually that's so smooth and this powertrain the mild hybrid's really smooth actually it's very responsive too <laughs> it's got some power got some pep in its step let me tell you um, aside from that other stuff seat comforts great air conditioned seat function that's definitely coming in clutch it is hot today and that feels good yeah I, overall I like this um, like this seating position feels great a lot of cars I'm frankly not very comfortable in I'm not a huge person but I've got pretty big legs and these seats are actually very comfortable for me to like be in so uh, you know I feel like most people right that are you know probably going to be you know larger in the leg section because most people in the us here frankly are larger are going to be comfortable in these seats point that i'm trying to make here so being the inline six this doesn't have a dynamic mode like you have in the v8 <laughs> this is quick though it is super quick this is more than enough power wow that's impressive and again i mean we have like basically comfort and eco that we can go between from an on-road mode perspective so comfort is going to be your sporty driving mode i suppose but yeah i love how this handles again being unibody it's really rigid um so you don't get the crazy body roll that you're going to get in the other you know vehicles in this segment that are all body on frame and so yeah let's sum things up and if you guys don't know if you haven't if you don't follow the channel i'm actually looking at potentially adding a uh, defender to the fleet as kind of like a family <laughs> vehicle because all of my vehicles are somewhat un impractical right now and uh gonna need one pretty soon but anyways here's what i have to say about the new defender is you know i wasn't so sure about it when i first reviewed them but it's one of those vehicles that has grown on me a lot over time i really like the styling now especially when you put like a you know, blackout package like this on it i think it looks great or like the off-road kit on it like the adventure pack i think that looks great um interior again that's this is also grown on me like initially i was kind of like okay this is this weird it's like trying to be a luxury car but it's also trying to be like a hardcore off-roader and it just looks weird but now i really like this interior like having some luxury but then also having that kind of like rugged edge to it and then from a driving perspective perspective that was another thing that i was kind of worried about because i'm like ah, unibody you know independent suspension i'm like come on is this just a you know lifted toyota camry but you know after seeing a lot of off-road videos with this and seeing how much it can handle it's super impressive with the all-wheel drive system they have in this and then on top of that it drives so well on road like you aren't conceding things like what you have to concede with the other vehicles um in this you know cool off-road or you know tire on the back segment right and so basically you get the best of both worlds you get crazy off-road capability but then you get amazing on-road capability as well and that is why i will probably be adding these one of these to the fleet pretty soon i also love this look i can see under the vehicle with the camera that would be great for off-roading again just the tech on this really cool like there's just so much to it so yeah that's new defender now let's get some things up for a video on this defender 90 again a huge shout out thank you to the land rover of lehigh like i said this one is available for the time being definitely check them out i'll see all of you in that next video